Hey there loves! Welcome back to my channel. This is Jean Castillo and I release weekly videos in which I share my know-hows on the nitty-gritty of English and research. If you want to reinforce your learnings in these topics, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you wouldn't miss any of my uploads. In this video, I am gonna tackle designing a research topic and provide examples of it. If you are interested, then please do watch until the end. So what are you waiting for? Let's get a ball rolling! Choosing a research problem that is specific, research-worthy, and not overgeneralized is the primary step in the rigorous process of a research work. If you are still uncertain and you are facing difficulties in choosing a research-worthy topic, then you need to follow these steps. First, you have to observe environmental scanning or reconnaissance. In other words, you have to observe your surrounding. Observe your school, your barangay, or your municipality. What is the recurring problem or ang paulit-ulit na problem that is experienced by the people in your local. These recurring problems mean that they must be resolved and addressed immediately. So, if you have observed that there is an issue or a concern that needs to be resolved, then it could be a good research topic. Remember that research-oriented people are considered as inquisitive or curious. Researchers must be naturally curious. They are fond of asking questions like, Why? Paano nangyari ito? Why is it happening in our school? Why is it experienced by my fellow residents? Aside from why, we can also ask the question how. How can we resolve these concerns? How can we resolve these issues? And that is where designing a research topic starts. The second step is conducting a preliminary investigation. I have observed that most researchers j just jump into a conclusion that the problem really exists in their chosen local or in their chosen setting of the study without even conducting a preliminary investigation. And then, during the defense, let's say title defense or research proposal defense, they are not able to justify their research problem because they skip this very important step, which is doing or conducting a preliminary investigation. So why do we need to conduct a preliminary investigation? Of course, we have to prove that the problem is happening in your setting of the study. If the problem does not exist in your local, then there is no need to research for that. How can we conduct a preliminary investigation? Of course, you need to have an interview with your potential respondents or participants because this is not only important in a quantitative research but also in a qualitative study. The first option is conducting an interview. Since we are dealing with a worldwide health crisis, it is not advisable to conduct the interview via face-to-face. -face. Therefore, we have to utilize other means such as messenger or email or we can also have the interview through Google Meet or Zoom. Please do note that in conducting an interview, you need to have a guide question. It is better to be a semi-structured interview compared to unstructured or structured because in unstructured interview, perhaps you will miss some points or you will miss some questions that you need to raise. Meanwhile, in a structured interview, you just need to stick with the questions that you have prepared. What if there are important insights that you need to ask further? It is better to have a semi-structured interview. You have prepared guide questions, but throughout your discussion or throughout your interview, you can pose follow-up questions. This is very important for clarification or verification or if you want to add additional insights. Aside from interview, you can also conduct a survey. But please make sure that you will not put your health at risk. How can you conduct a survey without establishing a face-to-face -face interaction with your potential participants or respondents? Well, you can utilize Google Sheets. 
It is very convenient to use. You just need to encode and prepare the questions. And once all the respondents are done answering the survey, a summary of results will be provided. But what if your potential participants or respondents do not have an access to Google Sheet? You can use other platforms just like Messenger. I think almost everyone has an access to Messenger, so you can conduct the preliminary investigation through this medium. By the way, I forgot to mention this in the video. Please craft a letter that will be sent to your potential respondents so that they will know what is the purpose of your interview or your survey. Also, let your teacher check the letter to avoid grammatical errors and other errors in the technicalities in business correspondence. The third step is read related literature. In this step, you need to look for a wide array of literature for you to identify what has been studied, what is not yet done, and what is the recommendation of the researchers on the research topic. Reading undoubtedly fuels our mind. Therefore, as a researcher, you need to be a wide reader and you should not just settle for the information that you will find here and there. You have to verify your source and make sure that these are based on a systematic and scientific process. The same way with looking for related literature, do not just stop after using Google for countless times or for five times, let's say, and then you weren't able to find the appropriate literature. Of course, it's not easy, but you have to widen your horizon research for more sources research for more literature there are a lot of resources online that you can utilize here are some After getting enough information, you can now start defining the problem. In this step, you need to narrow down or to specify the research problem to your chosen local and respondents. It is not advisable that your research topic is very broad and too narrow. You need to consider the principle of SMART. S stands for specific, M manageable, A attainable, R resource oriented, and T time bounded. If your research problem adheres to these principles, then you can now start finalizing your research topic. Before I provide some sample research topics, let us first watch the video made by my students. But I think I need to change the audio because I would be copyrighted.
are the sample research topics for a quantitative study. That ends today's lesson. I hope you learned a thing or two from me. If I was able to help you design your research topic, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell to keep you posted of our weekly uploads. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, study well. Bye!